Greetings once again. I'm Joan Gabriel, and this is the new Calculus Channel. So today, I'm going to talk about this professor and computational applied mathematics advisor. So he teaches both mathematics and statistics. Many years ago, I had some email exchanges with this guy about his article, What's Wrong with Calculus? Now, what I've done here is because this is too small for me to read, I've copied and pasted in here, okay? So this is uh, the gist. So let's go through some of the points of his article. What I explained to him is that there is a calculus, there is an edu there is a education crisis in calculus because mainstream academics don't really understand calculus, and it doesn't take long uh, for me to prove it from his own article. So he says, the fundamental theorem of calculus has not only made calculus one of the most powerful intellectual tools known to man, but it has created a dichotomy that makes calculus very difficult to teach. Okay, so now we have got, we're going to go into the dichotomy. Should calculus be presented as a taproot of geometry, or should it be presented as a tip of the analysis iceberg? So that's probably the, di the dichotomy. So maybe we should write the dichotomy down, right? So it says, uh, geometry or the bullshit known as real analysis. Okay, there is no such thing as a real number, by the way. But I'm not going to go into that right now. Um, so let's just close up this window so I don't go back to him again. So... <clears throat> Is calculus the first step toward an understanding of the topology of the real line for crying out loud? I mean, there is no such thing as a real line. And I'll place a link to one of my articles proving it to you. And topology is not mathematics, by the way. It's anti-mathematical gibberish. Or is calculus the first step in the exploration of manifolds? No, it has nothing to do with manifolds, which are based 100% on the utter rot of set, set theory, and the geometry of mechanics. I mean, so you see a mainstream academic sort of has half his brain infected with the syphilis that is peddled in mainstream academics, which is set theory topology. Then he says, of course, the answer is both. <laughs> oh, dear. So, all right, let's see. So he says geometry and nil, real analysis are the same thing, right? Well, uh, you know what I think of that. Now, and he says, therein lies the crisis. This idea was explored in detail by Homos. That sounds like a Greek guy, probably another idiot who was trained, also trained in a Western university. I haven't actually looked up this guy's name, but I suppose one could say Homos, calculus, like that, and see what comes up, okay? Hmm. So, oh, not very far off. He was a Hungarian-born mathematician, not far from Greece. He very possibly he had Greek DNA too, seeing that I am related to a lot of Hungarians. Um, and I have Greek DNA, and I suppose it's through the Greek DNA. Of course, that's not necessarily true, but not necessarily untrue either. So, uh, Hungarian, yeah, I'm related to, oh, Jewish. Oh, that means I'm even more related to him. Born in Hungary into a Jewish home. Okay, so sorry, Greeks, <laughs> we're referring to the really bad part of my DNA, the Jewish side. See, I have both Jew and Greek DNA. So, okay, so this, this idiot wrote a book. Okay, let's go back here. And likewise, many generations of mathematicians have declared in their own words that all calculus books are bad. Isn't that a remarkable statement? Did you know that? Think about it. Have you ever heard a mainstream mathematics professor say, all calculus books are bad. And how can they be bad? Or good, as for that matter. In fact, it was once accepted that traditional approaches are flawed, as evidenced by so many of us saying we did not know calculus until graduate school. At one time, nearly everyone talking about calculus, a pump, not a filter, and the need for a lean and lively calculus. Okay, so 
I'm not going to read all of it. But he says, so is there anything wrong? And if so, what is it? He asks some questions, you know, setting the tone and the ambiance. And uh, he says, this paper presents the answers. So he's going to give some of his answers and idea. And ideas here in this. So he says, evidence of a crisis. And so... Every concept that is talked about has to be proven rigorously, right? So it says it is unlikely that there will ever be a means of teaching calculus that allows every theorem to be proven rigorously. Now, doesn't my historic geometric theorem just totally disprove that statement? So let's go back to the fundamental theorem of calculus. Now, you've seen this in recent previous videos, by the way. What did I say? What did the great John Gabriel say? And I want you to remember this. Okay. The great John Gabriel said this. He said that f of b minus f of a over b minus a is an arithmetic mean or level magnitude of all <clears throat> of all the y ordinates of f dash of x in this interval, okay? Wow. Have you ever seen that in any mainstream textbook? Think about it carefully. No, you haven't, because it's never been recognized or realized by any of the utter, driveling, sniveling, idiotic morons who came before me. Nobody knew it. And I, as a matter of fact, I don't know why this is happening now, but as a matter of fact, I told nicely some of these things why is this why is this i don't understand this do i need to say this again okay so sometimes this gets a little wacky and you have to reload it it's not a very good tool and <clears throat> coming back to the discussion he says um this is true of many introductory math courses blah 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 and he says we focus on three categories of such evidence and he says how mathematicians well he means how moronic mainstream math academics discuss calculus among themselves that's not mathematicians none of them are even the colons of a real mathematician so the crisis is, is evident in the way they discuss calculus with each other absolutely i mean if you talk to any two mainstream academics they have a different idea. Let's see if we're still recording. Yes, they have a different idea of what this means here, by the way. That uh, deceased homosexual idiot who wrote, uh, Stuart, his name is James Stuart, who wrote that famous series, thought that there was two parts. And he basically uh, branded that into mainstream calculus. There aren't two parts to the fundamental theorem. There is only one part, and you're looking at it right here. There's no other part to it. So um, he says, uh, for example, I read a test question written by an accomplished research, researcher that asked for a tangent line to a function at a given point. So that's kind of a common thing that they do. What is, by the way, what is a tangent line to a function at a given point? So let's come back here again. Let's clear the canvas. So if you have a function like that, a tangent line, by the way, is a line that intersects in one point, extends to both sides. I didn't say doesn't meet it anywhere else. It can meet it over here, but we don't care about the over here and about the over here. We only care about the point of tangency, okay? That is your original definition of a tangent line, not the shit that you see in mainstream limit from left equal to limit from right. That would be meaningless in itself without the tangent line, okay? And of course, mainstream definitions using this shit are circular, but mainstream academics, we, as we know, are incorrigibly stupid morons. So a tangent line is one which intersects in one point, extends to both sides, and never crosses, okay? At the point of tangency. In other words, if you have something like 
x cubed. You cannot have a tangent line there. You can only have half tangents, okay? Same with the sine function, okay? At any point of inflection, there is no tangent line. And by the way, it doesn't matter because guess what? The mean value or the fundamental theorem of calculus does not care about inflection points. Who told you that? That's right, I did, the great John Gabriel. Okay, let's get back to this document. So <clears throat> then he says, locally a tangent line intersects a curve at only one point and then almost immediately make the contradictory statement, the tangent line to a line is the line itself. Did you see that? So even this mainstream academic notices obvious flaws in their understanding and in their formulation. And he says, Riemann sums converge to the function, so the integral converges to the area, blah, blah, blah. And he says, if a sequence converges conditionally, then it does, then so does its series. And he says, all calculus books are full of errors, even though they are written and reviewed by mathematicians, you see. So this, this statement here by a professor of mainstream mathematics should shock other people, shouldn't it? There are exercise instructions imploring the student to let f of x be the antiderivative of f of x in which c equals zero. Yeah, calculus, there you go, that deceased homosexual idiot James Stewart in his fourth, edi in his fourth edition. To see why this does not make sense, consider that that and that are both antiderivatives of sine of 2x. So, <laughs> um, I'm not going to waste time on uh, things like that. They're not even important. But he carries on and he says, my suspicion is that many of us could not understand uh, primarily on the memorization. Uh, well, we could not understand what we were being taught at the time, so we relied primarily on the memorization in our first calculus course. That means... Uh, knowledge acquisition through inferential suspension. That, by the way, is my theory of learning. I've talked about it before, but not in very much detail. In other words, you encounter a concept the first time, you can't relate it to any of the prior concepts you already know, and you store it away in your memory, in your subconscious, and later on you try to make sense of it. Okay. Well, mainstream... Professors never actually make sense of it because they're idiots. So do read this. He says, um, do any of them ever, ever snicker when they first hear the oxymoronic statement, C is an arbitrary constant? I mean, you know, research has established that even our best students reduce limits to a set of rules to be memorized. Um, so he writes an interesting article, and it's not without error, by the way. He does have some wrong ideas. And I know I picked this up when I was communicating with him in my emails. Uh, of course, you know, there was no convincing him. You can't convince somebody who believes in things and believes he is right, and there is no other way to explain something. So in his next paper, he addresses facing the crisis, which there are a lot of errors in that paper, but you can look it up for yourself. I'm not going to waste any more time on it. So what I've basically been trying to show to you here is that uh, mainstream calculus has never been rigorous. It hasn't been understood by the math professors who teach it, even the mainstream math professors. Okay. And what I'm telling you is correct because I don't give a shit what the whole of modern math academia think. I piss and shit on them. Sorry for that expression, but I have such condescension for, condescension for them that I don't even regard them in the slightest sense. They're nobodies, but they have established this big wall around themselves and formed a clique, and it's called the Church of Math, Mainstream Math Academia, and inside it, uh, live morons who have dissertations in topology and set theory and all sorts of other non-mathematical topics because they obviously wouldn't be able to come up with anything interesting in mathematics. So they wrote on absolute garbage. Okay, if you're not already a subscriber, become one. Tell your friends about it. Follow me on Academia. 
And if you're feeling generous, buy me a cup of coffee or a meal. I'm John Gabriel. This is a new calculus channel. Till next time. Till next time. I don't know why that came up, but till next time, friends.